We will cover these basic things. That is historical background, basics of radiology, then X-ray production, X-ray tube design, and we will cover the X-ray dental unit. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about the historical background. First, radiograph was taken by Rottenham approximately in 1895. And he was just uh, accidentally, he was exposed and uh, he said it's, uh, he has seen his fingers on the radiograph. And from here, he started working on the invisible X-rays. In the same year, first dental radiograph was taken. It was approximately November, and when the first it was dis uh, discovered, it was approximately March. Then, in approximately in 1896, just first intraoral radiograph was developed. A very smart film, which was covered in the uh, uh, dark paper for the first oral film which was taken in approximately uh, 120 years back. Then hard cathode access tube was invented. And this is a really wonderful, uh, what you say, um, the invention, which really changed main, all the parameters of a radiograph. In 1923, basically the General Electric a developed a dental x-ray machine and this dental x-ray machine was so uh, open uh, what you say so so dangerous that even during taking the x-ray one person has to stand beside the dental unit that there should be no electric shock then uh, later on in 1905 bisecting technique which we will study inshallah was done in the 1920 parallel technique of the intraoral radiograph was developed. In panoramic view, it is uh, the first OPG was discovered in 1959. Later on, Panorax developed in 1980. And this Panorax really got the revolution. And in uh, uh, 2005, approximately, CBCT was developed. After having the, this uh, simple uh, ABC of uh, basic radiography, now we are going for the uh, detail of uh, this uh, or basic radiography. You see, this is a, a very simple thing. You have the nucleus and uh, different shells. And if just you remove one electron right from here, what is going to happen? This electron is a neutral one. It is going to convert it into ion. And that is positron. It will convert into, because the positive load will be more, and the negative is coming. It's going to convert into ion. So the, all the size which we are generating with the X-rays is basically electromagnetic wave. And this electromagnetic wave is actually when it is revolving and producing the waves around it. Now, the electrostatic forces are two. One, when they are attraction between the two proton and electron, then it is called an electrostatic attraction force. It is like this. If this is going to happen, then we will say that there was action between the positive and negative action. But if it is going to happen, the centrifugal force, the pulling that the electron away from the nucleus, like this, that this is a positive in the nucleus and negative in the nucleus, and this goes away, and that in the area and that is called the centrifugal electron from the shell. The balance between electrostatic force which is pulling the negative point 
are electron towards the nucleus and the centrifugal force which is pulling the electron away from the nucleus these are balanced where in the pop shell that shell will let to allow this uh, whole negative uh, electron around a specific area and that specific area is called shell you well know in your second year bds uh, second year fsc as well this is the universal law this is going on all over the universe sun is catching all the planets in its orbit due to its balance of ef and cf forces the galaxy it is maintaining all of the planets all of the stars around its center of black hole by the activity of ef and cf forces so same is going on in the uh, atom and that is what i have described just to recall you for the step to understand the axis the electromagnetic radiation which we see are in the visible spectrum and majority of them are invisible spectrum remember very nicely 380 to 730 nanometer is that spectrum where our retina can see beyond to 318 nanometer below to that we cannot see and above to 730 nanometer we cannot see our visible light spectrum is only between the 380 to 730 nanometer above and below we cannot see our retina can very smart use and thousands and thousands and millions and millions wavelength are there and our eye cannot see it you see you are sitting right there in your room or in your uh, um, uh, waiting area you see the, there are millions of waves they are crossing your body tv waves radio waves electromagnetic waves photo waves there are so many waves they are crossing your body but you cannot see you can see only the things which are between 380 nano nanometer to 730 nanometer other all waves which are mentioned here they are not visible these all waves actually used to travel at the speed of light and you all know jet we have know they are now saying there is upon a uh, new theory is coming that there are the certain particles which are powerful more than that of the speed of light but they, they this is not just the invention of 2019 that this research is going on that there are the particles what is called the god particle i don't know what is the mean of the uh, depth of this that they are saying that now this is uh, uh, more than the speed of light but uh, yet uh, you see that we at uh, this level we understand that there is nothing more uh, speedful or more powerful than which can travel more than the power of the speed of light ladies and gentlemen if you see the electromagnetic spectrum it is like this you see the all the rays which are coming from the sky they cannot reach to the level of the sea it is only the visible light which has the power that which can penetrate to whole of the spectrum and reach to the sea light while the x rays you see it has less power to penetrate deep up to the sea level the all the grounds and all the uh, what you say areas above the um, earth level is capable of protecting your earth from other uh, waves but there is two option one is a microwave option which so to some extent can go deep and a radio which can uh, just uh, can go maximum deep but the only the visible light is as a parameter to reach up to the sea level now as i have described you the 300 17 nanometer uh, 
to 730 nanometer is the only the visible spectrum. Below to that, that is the infrared, um, uh, that is ultraviolet. The X-rays come beneath the ultraviolet X-ray, and then is the gamma rays. Remember one thing very nicely. As we move away from the visible spectrum, either going above, either going below, we are going in a more drastic parameters. As we go below to the visible spectrum, the R waves are more drastic. And same is going on right in the above parameter. Ladies and gentlemen, what we say, and that is that these are the heat producing areas and these are the electromagnetic areas that means that in this area is that where the penetration within the structure is more powerful why in case of this spectrum penetration is less but the traveling is more as we if we go above to the infrared in rays wave spectrum, the movement of the waves will be more. And as we come below that, the movement is less, but the penetration is more. I am just going to explain to you right here. You see, this is the wave from here to here. This is the wavelength. It is the distance from, from the crest of one wave to the crest of next wave. Right here to here, it is the two elevation and the distance between two elevation, the distance between the two elevation is called the wavelength. You see that this is the distance right here. This distance is traveled by these two waves. One wave is going up and down, up and down, up and down three times. That means its frequency is three. And this second wave, it is going up and down, up and down only for two times. That is the frequency two. What happened? The wavelength is two. The wavelength is three. As the wavelength increases, the frequency reduces. Try to understand. Try to understand. Frequency is increased. It is T. But wavelength is reduced. Frequency is reduced. It is 2 the wavelength is increased the frequency is the number of the waves in a given distance that is frequency and this is three but the wavelength is small frequency is two but the wavelength is large it is a reverse to that of the wavelength so if you increase the wavelength, you are going to reduce the frequency. If you are increasing the wavelength, you are going to reduce the frequency. You have increased the wavelength, frequency is reduced. You have reduced the wavelength, frequency is increased. So that is the basic concept which must be in your mind before understanding the radiograph. Now, this is a question to all the audience, approximately 50 audience are sitting there. See the radio waves, TV waves, visible light, X-rays, gamma rays and cosmic rays. First question, which of the above example of electromagnetic wave has the shortest wavelength? Mute on my screen. You are uh, disturbing. Uh, you are, uh, it's better that you go to the comments. I will see the comments. Please don't write on the uh, screen. Uh, uh, please, uh, you are going to. Uh, I understand that uh, uh, your name is being displayed. I understand who, who is there. 
but I, it is more lovely that if you don't uh, give hints to other because let them uh, try, let them enjoy my lecture. Uh, now the second question: Come up as the lowest frequency. Please don't mark. Please don't mark anything. <laughs> yes, first answer is cosmic rays. That is right because it has the short wavelength. Good. Now, lowest frequency like one wave. So it has the lowest frequency. You see, yeah, try to understand it's right here that you have shortened the wavelength, shortened the wavelength indirectly, your frequency is increased. Here you have increased the wavelength. This much big wave, wavelength is there. That means you have reduced the frequency and that is radio wave. So that is the first thing you understand that as the, uh, we reduce the wavelength, we are going to increase the frequency. And as we are going to increase the wavelength, we are going to reduce the frequency. Very good. Now, next question. Which of the above X-rays has highest energy? Not good. Very, uh, very naughty guy. If you are going to display it again, I will request you. Please don't do it. Uh, you are going to not get the benefit of that because I like that every body should learn. Uh, don't be uh, annoyed. I am just requesting. You, please, uh, A, B, C. There are three wavelengths. Please write down in the uh, um, what you say in the answer book. It is right in the comment. Please write down there. Which of the above X-ray has the highest energy? It is lovely one. Uh, I want to just I want to uh, just add the fact that after two minutes uh, the meeting will uh, be disconnected for two minutes. Okay, I, I, I just need your message. All okay. the audience, okay. please stay in your uh, box. Uh, it is going to be over just in one minute. And after one minute, we are going to restart with the same ID and with same everything. Uh, don't go away. We will uh, restart again. It is just meeting. Uh, we have uh, two minutes left. And as soon as the meeting will be uh, closed, we will restart the meeting again at the same ID and same. Just you go back and click again, and you are going to come back again in the same ID. Uh, it's a very simple uh, when it will be closed. You just uh, go to your same ID from where you have uh, got in before and you click the, the, that point you will again come to the same webinar and same meeting inshallah uh, right there and uh, don't go away you just uh, go and just we are in the start of the yeah, we have not lost anything actually we are started slightly late so we are going to have the 45 minutes more because it is not a paid version that's why we have to uh, stop after 45 minutes so it is uh, my request all of you that uh, please stay with me just go back to your same id which uh, you have logged in before and then after uh, logging uh, you come to the um, uh, meeting again and that is uh, what we are going to uh, uh, we will continue right from here, from where we are going to uh, stop. And uh, I think uh, that is uh, we are going to have the stoppage of uh, our meeting right now. And uh, we are going to restart our meeting for right from the, the same ID which you have uh, started this meeting again. And you are going to join this meeting again with the same ID and the uh, same uh, um, uh, um, identity. Uh, I think that uh, we are waiting for the restart of the meeting and just uh,
we are going to have the restart and that uh, restart inshallah we are going to get uh, again Okay, sir. Uh, just one minute. Sir, you can share now. has the highest energy and that is a why highest energy because there is more frequency there is less wavelength but there is more frequency you can say that this area is small This frequency is more. Why energy is more? Because the covering area, which is covered by this wavelength, this electromagnetic wave, if you open the spring, it will be very long spring. So, in a maximum energy within this electromagnetic area. But in this case, you see, we have less electromagnetic area being restored in this particular frequency. And at this wavelength, we are going to travel more, but we are not going to have them energy. So, that is the highest energy is A. Now, what is ionization? It's very simple. You see, any electromagnetic wave, if it hits the outer shell, it is going to expel the outer shell electron from its shell, and there will be domination of the positive ion. Positive ion will be dominated. And this simple neutral atom will be converted into Iron. Two iron will be there. One will be called as negative iron, which is expelled. And what is the uh, second iron is the positive iron, which is with the nucleus. And that that's why it is called positron and that is called negative. This is the concept of the ionization. Now ionizing radiation where there is negative or positive ions are being generated <coughs> and that converts into <coughs> electromagnetic wave or t particular electromagnetic waves are what waves 
these are the waves when they are going any electron or positron is going up and down up and down upside is north downside is south upside is north and downside is south so up and down results into a magnetism this wave become electromagnetic wave so whenever there is electromagnetic wave it moves up and down and it runs in a speedy way this is called the electromagnetic mechanism it is present in the gamma rays it is present in the x rays in the so many they have the same mechanism <coughs> particulates <coughs> particulates are when alpha particles they run in a straight way and electron running in a straight way that are not producing up and down in their traveling that's why they are not electromagnetic no <coughs> Trying to understand this wonderful mechanism, which is called Bremsstollen characteristic. Bremsstollen characteristic is the breaking radiation or thermal radiation. Here we start concept of the X-ray. X-ray produced when high-speed electrons are slowed down as they pass number one, close to number two. Are strike number one. Either they pass close to, or they strike what nucleus of the target atom. How the X-rays is produced? X-rays is produced when a very high speed electron is slowed down. Oh, it's slow down. An electron is rushing in a speed, and this speed is being altered or restricted due to its passage close to the atom, or by striking to that. Why close to that? Close to the atom because outer shell. Has outer shell has what electron, and when electron is coming to the electron, what is going to happen? It is going to expel the electron. So it is not let it strike the atom, but if the atom hits the nucleus, then the speed is also slowed down. In both ways, either it is stopped or either it is being hit in the target uh, atom, it is going to produce the X. How? It is like this. High-speed electron from the filament enter to the tungsten tungsten atom. Remember one thing: the tungsten is that metal which has a very high atomic number, a very resistant, very resistant to heat, and that is that when any high-speed electron. From filament enter to the tungsten atom. What is going to happen? It is going to release one thing. One is X-rays like this, and second is the electron which has hit the nucleus and it is coming back. I generate it again. high speed electron is coming hitting the nucleus second side the electron come out you got my point and how this the bremsstrom x ray production is there now 
the second is where the maximum energy is produced into two and now it strikes the nucleus and it is gone it has vanished in the nucleus and all of its energy is converted into x-ray production these are the two basic principle one it strikes it has given some energy and its energy is being delivered there to out and the electron has repelled out from the nucleus second it has struck the nucleus but the whole of the electron is being converted into electromagnetic wave now the one thing i am going to ask all of you now the first uh, the, the, the first thing that happened you see here it has struck the atom and see the wavelength see the wavelength here it is a long wavelength so the frequency is less on the second part you see when the whole electron is vanished in the nucleus like this the but the wavelength is produced you see it is a small wavelength so the frequency is more so on the second part we are going to understand one thing that when the electron vanishes within the nucleus it was going to produce maximum energy but when it is going to have just a part of it which is being converted into x rays it has less frequency no what is the question um, i request the person who has marked this uh, uh, pencil can you please eradicate it i will be thankful to you please remove this pencil it is not good that you are disturbing like a babies like a fun because it is a very precious time for many of you that we are going to have this parameter uh, don't play with this type of nasty games you are very educated people and you are very good dental uh, is given without any financial liability to me or to you it is just a volunteer work don't please if you are Sir, not going to help us don't disturb us the uh, high I, speed I think, electron uh, your screen has been stopped vacancy is created and this vacancy is different filled from the upper level and again and this is the another mechanism which i am going to tell you it strikes the inner shaft No, no, you see, before it was striking the nucleus, and now it has struck the inner K shell. The vacancy still has been filled, and, and again the energy is created. So what happened? Basically, we are going to get the two energy. So first energy is by strike, and second energy is by uh, going to fill the energy by striking. You see here. one energy the second energy that is x ray production now ladies and gentlemen when you understand this big 
x-ray shell, we are going to get the x-rays, or we are going to get the x-ray by striking the nucleus. 1% production of the x-rays is by this interaction. And 99% what is produced? Heat. And this heat production results into melting of the system. So excessive heat which is produced there is controlled by the high melting point of the tungsten itself. And then would produce, uh, give the uh, copper sleeves, cooling from the oil, surrounding the x-ray, seeing that uh, uh, we have the, uh, sir, uh, the x-ray tube ke under se oil nikal gaya. That means that cooling agent is gone. And then there is always multiple sheets around the tungsten uh, x-ray tube just to prevent the heat. Because to avoid the action of this whole mechanism, we are going to get only 1% of the X-ray. And so that's why we have to uh, get the protective umbrella. Now I'm going to give you one another thing for your basic knowledge. It is called as attenuation. Attenuation is a mechanism in which a reduction of X-rays beam intensity, which has turned matter. That means the wet X-ray we have produced, it should reach to the X-ray film, but by certain attenuations, this X-ray beam intensity is reduced. And that reduction is called uh, attenuation. Now, the, what type of attenuation we are use, going to get? Coherent, compunction, and photoelectric. 9% of the X-rays are not an, attenuated. That means the, if we are going to get the 100% X-ray, we are going to have the 9% distance, so 91% of the X-rays, they are going to reach to the X-ray film. Uh, just coherent is that when it strikes, it is expelled. So this is the first attenuation. Second, it hits and it rather going out, it uh, results into formation of the ionization. Third, photoelectric. It hits and the primary X-ray is being abolished or what you say it has lost the whole energy and there is no X-ray present and there is no scattering. So these three types of the attenuation are there just to understand that all the X-ray which are generated from the X-ray tube do not reach to the film. They are being attenuated in different ways. Now, after getting the uh, FSE level uh, basics of oral radiology, we slightly move up and we go for how to produce the X-rays, practical X-ray production. And that is the, like this. Now, first we are going to see the properties of X-rays. They travel in the straight line. Cannot focus at a point. Remember one thing. This is the only X-rays which cannot be focused in one point. Other wavelengths you can focus it, but it cannot be focused in the point. This is very important and knowledge to you that you cannot focus the X-rays on one point. It uh, abolish, it love to scatter. Then differentiality absorbed. That if they are in the different stages, they are going to absorb, cause fluorescence. Then there is a any, but you say shining. There is a whenever the X-ray is passing through, there is a shyness in there, and it cause the very harmful to the living tissue. When you will study the biology, you will the whole much drastic x-ray is the high energy waves their frequency is very strong so the wavelength is very small so that is why this is a very high energy wave they have no mass obviously they are electromagnetic 
so there is nowhere no chance they are not positive they are not negative they are neutral electromagnetic waves then their the speed is very high the speed run at the speed of light and they are invisible these are characters must be understood by all the post graduates and by all the uh, consultants as well these are the very important characteristics of the x ray which generally people do, uh, do not uh, understand or do, sometimes they miss and uh, this should be in your mind now after getting the character uh, now i am coming to the filament that is the stuff it is a high atomic number that is 74 it does for the heat radiation it absorbs the heat but it transfer it it do not retain the heat in itself it has very hard melting point tungsten carbide or tungsten filament itself used to melt at 3400 point it is not a very simple to melt a tungsten filament can be drawn into a fine wire this is an another excellent thing for the tungsten because we don't want a big uh, uh, what you say structure which has a weight full or which is uh, having the characters are disturbing the uh, uh, weight of the in the initial stages when the x ray was born there were the tungsten rods were available but now these are the resulted into filaments and these are very thin filaments which are available right there in the market now how the release of electrons the hot air filament when the current flow after pressing the exposure switch would when they press the switch light and the x-ray machine the hotter of the filament get greater the number of electron that has released now i push the button what is going to happen the hot filament and it is going to release the electrons more hotter the filament more release of the electron that mean tungsten is wonderful for us it has 3000 more than 3000 centigrade melting point and if we are going to heat it more and more we are going to get more and more electron and as we get more and more more electron we are going to get more and more x rays and that is wonderful that is what we want from this concept we are going to design the x ray tube x ray tube is designed like this you see this is from the lateral side this is the front side basically more stronger more potent than that of the tungsten that is molybdenum it is approximately in the very high uh, chart of the uh, periodic table you see on the left side you see filament is that but when you see it the from the front your eye cannot even see it it is so bright it is so white it is so hot that its whole area which is right here it is invisible it is absolutely sharp and bright and that is how the tungsten tube is formed this is cathode this is anode and that uh, when it travel it is going to get i am going to tell you another anode you see this is the target anode and from front side you see it look like this but on the lateral side these are two copper stems which have the tendency to reflect they are very sharp mirror which has right here target i am again going back just to give you understanding this is cathode where the filament of tungsten is placed and it is going to generate the x rays and that is 
the anode this striking area is anode and here it is placed by the copper while in a cathode it is placed by the medium now what happens this is cathode this is anode and this anode is rotating and due to rotation it is going to give its energy on outer surface here the x rays are produced they are going to strike on the surface this is a very reflective surface it is going to hit the anode and this anode is reflecting the x rays to the focusing side to the beam to the tube or we can eid position indication device here the x rays are being produced they hit the anode which is a, has a very reflecting surface and this after the striking to the anode x ray they are produced and they are being genetic right here it is like this it is rotating and it is producing the x rays now here is the tube x ray tube this is cathode this is anode you have plug it the and uh, the cathode is now red you again plug it it is going to produce the x rays going back you see first you heat the tungsten it is red now you uh, now generate the anode resulting into production of the x rays so always remember the first click results into heating of the tungsten and second click results into activation of the anode which attracts the x rays and it reflects it is like this you see this is cathode which generate the x rays this is the target anode from here x rays they travel to the positive and results into striking you see why they make it tilted why they make it tilted why not straight by tilting what that the rather than local spot point it shift right here it shift right here it is pid or what you say position indicating device or what you say x ray core from here it goes to x ray core and the spot is small if it is coming like this without converting itself into a small spot the energy will be less because the area is more but while you convert it in this direction to pid what will happen that you have the effective focal spot point because there is one point we have seen that we cannot focus it so other than focusing we convert it into a small area yeah next step that we have this pid but if tilt it like this sorry what is going to happen the area is more and we are going to have the actual focal spot looking perpendicular to the target surface this is apparent effective focal spot looking at the target surface through pid it is like this this you are get, getting if we are focusing to the pid it is like this and if you are focusing like this we are going to get the focal spot of the actual size now now this is another wonderful that 
gone before you. This is all of the story, which I have described you before. This is 220 volt electricity coming. This is the timer which you you are, you are going to select according to the thought, according to the size of the calcified area, bone or anterior teeth or posterior teeth timing. Then is the exposure button. Now, if I push the exposure button, what is going to happen? The energy is generated in milliamperes and it is going to activate step down transformer and going to heat the This is a step is the first step and can be this going step transformer with generate with I think, I think so, so. Uh, sir uh, signal has, has been dropped so so sir you can sir, connect you again connect again i guess your I mic guess has been mic has been i guess sir has stopped stop. just wait just guys, wait, guys. Uh, so, so i hope so even so you can in two or three minutes can you say uh, then if, if you have any question in the, the comment section, section, you can ask. I think, I think sir, 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 so, sorry that uh, there is a, a, a electricity gone and due to this electricity the my net is uh, uh, blocked uh, so uh, uh, we will start, start. i have uh, uh, shown you the generation of the ms now we are going to have the second step of generating kvp and that is how the KVP generates and it is going to generate two things. Number one, step of transformer, and second, anode and cathode again energized. And you just energize. And what happened? That you see here the X ray filament. It is coming. It is going to give heat. And you see this X ray. And this is the PID, or what you say, the uh, X-ray cone, and how you get the X-ray. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the X-ray tube, which we see actually present in the X-ray. That is brilliant window. This is the from where the X-rays come out, and these are the focusing cups, and this is a very small tube, but having a wonderful invention by the human. There are certain things which a, a qualified person should know. Exposure factors which modifies the X-ray beam. Filtration, collimation, quantity and quality. That's just a very simple thing. Don't be afraid. I will make it very simple. First is exposure. Exposure is KVP and MA and exposure timing. KVP is the transformer which is step up. MA is the step down transformer and exposure time according to required intensity. You see, in this picture, we have placed three X-rays. 
this assay is incorrect exposure too many assays too much energy film too dark this is for you to understand when you give more energy or more access to a film you are going to get the darker image more access result into darker image they you hold the lights you try to understand it whenever there is darker image no doubt there is developing problem but now we as we are uh, getting the digital uh, era developing problem is gone so the first thing you understand that the, if the the film uh, the, the result is darker that mean that your x ray is more than required area and if the x ray is lighter not enough x ray or energy too low film is too light if the film is white that mean the x ray energy is less you have given less exposure a less x ray being that you have given less time okay direct exposure how i am going to uh, come to know that this is correct exposure ladies and gentlemen try to understand the three things the three basic things are there number one is bone number two is denting number three is enamel if your x ray can identify all these three things that you can differentiate enamel from the dentin and the dentin from the bone that mean your x ray is fine all three calcified area if you can distinguish it from each other that this is enamel this is dentin and this is bone here you cannot distinguish where is dentin and where is enamel and the same is here the differentiation of bone is gone dentin and bone are intermingled with each other and here you see the definite bone definite dentin and very clear enamel you see very clear enamel very clear dentin and very clear bone <laughs> these are the three math parameters to understand the accuracy of any x-ray this is the exposure factor which i have indicated you more exp exposure it is going to result into darker thing less of exposure it is going to uh, result into lighter thing white is there and the correct exposure when dentin enamel and the bone the all the three are distinguished now is the filtration that is very important to understand by everyone the process of removing low energy x rays from the x ray beam is called the filtration you see we want to get the good exposure when the wavelengths are produced in the x rays there are some small wavelength some are medium wavelength some are slight uh, uh, good and some are very small wavelength we need small wavelength that we can have the better frequency we need better frequency and for that better frequency you see these three wave four wavelengths are there number 1 number 2 number 3 and number 4 which wavelength we require we look at this wavelength but this wavelength is only possible if we can stop all these other wavelength and what we are going to do number 1 we are going to stop the longest wavelength like this this is done by the glass window which is placed in the x ray tube the longest wavelength is stopped by the glass film second step oil and metal barriers oil is placed in the um, tube and there are 
the metal barriers they are placed in the tube, which stop the medium wavelength. And the other wavelength, which is the very nearer to the maximum short wavelength, it is being stopped the aluminum. Okay. These are the three filters which you were used to use for the stoppage of the extra filters. And that is with when you see the PID. Sir, after 30 this seconds, is the sir, after 30 seconds, the meeting in L uh, 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 after 30 seconds, we join the same the meeting in Please mute all of the people. Can you yes. mute all the people that I can go ahead for the, There are so many noises there. Can you mute uh, all the people? Yes, sir. I can mute all the ideas. Uh, they are going to deep frying and uh, uh, Sabah Khan, they are talking. Oh my God. Hello, Assalamualaikum, sir. Yes, sir, kar diya, ab aajin. Aajin, sir. Just a minute, guys. Uh, sir will be uh, coming back. So, let me add you all. Let me add you all. Sir, you can share your screen. Sir, you can share your screen. I'm a, a really very sorry to our audience. But today, we are suffering a lot from uh, due to an unpaid version. I will request to the organizer for that please uh, 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 arrange the. Uh, so next week, a uh, paid version or a, a good link so that we can uh, run because this uh, is a very uh, lengthy uh, webinar. It uh, used to cover two to three hours. So uh, we are coming to the PID. That is the position indicating devices. The filter are usually located in the end of the PID, which attach to the tube head. These are the filters. And this is the aluminium filter which can see posterior to the, that filter is the generally oil in it and then posteriorly there is the glass produced in it so these are the three filters which are always placed there collimation is a slightly simple to understand the it regulates the size or shape of the x-ray beam it depends upon the area covered. We need less area to cover, less patient exposure, and 
scattered radiation are the radiation which are scattered which should be prevented by collimation try to understand it the radiation are come from the tube they are going to hit the target area who want that only the target area should be hit by the x rays not the patient and uh, not the radiation which are coming from the tube should scatter in such a way you see this is patient and this is the collimator which we used to place there and that is the target say this is the x ray generating area what we are going to do if the collimator are placed there they are going to prevent the x ray exposure to the other area of the uh, like this you have generate the x rays they are going only to that area which is for the patient and all other area which are being not under the target they are being prevented that is called as a collimator again please see these are the collimator they are pro pro produced there and this is the target area where we want to get the x ray and if we produce the x rays like this we are going to get the collimated beam and we are going to prevent the patient from extra exposure that is called collimation and collimation is best done by you see if we have the round circle cone we are going to get more exposure but if we are going to have the rectangular collimation that results into 55% less radiation as compared to 7 cm round up so that is why we place this type of film that is the having the most least collimation last is the quality and quantity quality is the average energy and quantity is the number of x rays how it is like this one truck having how much load in it okay that is called the number of x rays that is quantity quality how much speed this truck is running that is the quality how much x rays wavelength is there and how many x rays wavelength are crossing there that is quality and quantity it is like this you see it is by the inverse square law this is x ray and it is from the distance one we give exposure to this distance like this but we are going to get the exposure it is like this these four what you say cubes this is the area which we are going to cover but if we are going to increase the distance like d2 what we are going to get we are going to increase the wavelength that is more x rays are being generated and what we are going to get the result like this so more pixels are produced as we give more x rays more quality more quantity to the area we are going to get more pixels and the more pixel is we are x ray quality Extra unit we have covered under the umbrella of radio biology. The response of the living system to the ionizing radiation is called as radio biology. what is called as let 
linear energy transfer. The late rate of loss of energy from radiation and particulate radiation has a higher LET than the X-ray. The, all the particles which are being generated, if they transfer to the body tissue, they are going to damage more. That's why ionization radiation is more dangerous than the, are the electromagnetic waves. And that is the linear transfer concept. Now, these are the two effects. Cytic effect and determinant effect. Cytic effect is, it is occurred by chance. You don't know the X-rays are there. You are sitting there and you are being exposed. Like the person who are working in the X-ray department, the X-rays are not being vanished within a second. It are moving throughout the walls of the X-rays. And that is why it is mandatory that we must have the lead walls. Usually within the threshold of the dose, the probability of static effect is the increase with the increasing dose, but the severity of the response is not proportional to the dose. As the doses are coming in this room, more doses is coming down, more drastic effect of the X-rays will be there. It will cause what? Slow mutation <laughs> resulting into genetic problems as well as to cancer. And you know, these two are the main side effects of when you are, you are going, being exposed to X-ray radiation. Second is determinating effect. It increases with the severity of increasing dose with the threshold level. There's one or two exposure of the X-rays, but you have given such a drastic X-rays that it has burned the area. It has damaged the area. So,
radiation this i have given you a simple graph where the most sensitive lymphoid reproductive cell bone marrow and intestinal epithelium moderately skin intestinal and oral mucosa so uh, here we come to understand that our oral mucosa is in, in between neither too sensitive and neither very less sensitive it is a moderately sensitive so we must be careful in every aspect less sensitive they are pretty mature bones liver gland thyroid and liver and least sensitive are kidney muscle and nerves so this you may take the photograph of this slide and you can keep it and that these are the cells which are more sensitive and these are the cells which are less sensitive these are the effects influenced by the total dose dose rate how much daily you give are you are in the area which is uh, more exposed type of the tissue which are uh, effective and the old age is more resistant as compared to the young and immature people but the protective measures we are going to give we have more risk in red uh, accidents as compared to we are going to get the benefit what protection we are going to give our patient do not hold the film for the patient this is very bad for the dentist mm -hmm. there are simple lead gloves they are available you can hold the film by these lead gloves if you have to place yourself do not place your index finger right in the mouth of the patient utilize the barrier if available by dry wall locate uh, what you say <clears throat> you must uh, have the wall which has the lead production use that uh, glass there must be able to absorb the patient in that glass and follow the position and distance rule which is right here these are the distance rule which are being observed by every, every dentist such and this is that you stand right posterior to the ear draw a line to the pinna that will card as the angle of the mouth line that we the straight line and from here you see there is approximately 6 feet area you go up to 135 degree right here this is 90 degree and this is 135 this is approximately a area which is called as mastoid area from here mastoid area to the angle of the joint you draw a straight line to 90 degree or 135 degree this is the most protective area for a dental surgeon to stand and this is the area where the radiations are going every time you are going to place your cone here 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 anywhere you have to move this triangle accordingly and that is the 90 degree and that is 135 and this is the mid is 16 feet and you go on rotating your position or uh, what you say you re re remain stand still and just turn the patient and turn the cone accordingly and then you go back to this protective area and prevent yourself that is the best thing you can do level latest uh, dental unit has done a very important thing one thing is the x-ray tube is changed sporting arm and control panel first i will just give you the just a simple dental x-ray machine is this is the your tube head this is the pid i bid we say beam indicating device or position 
it's an indicating device and these are the degrees you well know it is all place tube this is a sporting arm and this is a control panel and these are the timing where you can use the kvp and the timer and then the, you can use the ms right here there are slightly more uh, advanced and now there's a uh, uh, coming to the most latest is that like digital you can go for the digital placement of ma kvp and the timer and the most thing is that now it is approximately this time is as well gone there is indication of the teeth there is a preset everything you are not going to have any adjustment or any thing this is the um, adult this is a child this is a, a bite wing x rays if you want to take this is the periapical x rays this is a uh um, anterior teeth this is the premolar and this is molar now this is a, a latest uh, x ray which are coming they have this uh, modern control panel before there was this washing of the uh, uh was there we place it in the chamber of a developer and we uh, place it for five to seven minutes then we wash it with the water and again we fix it the fixer and then we help get on the dry place and hope we are going to get the time is changed the automatic processors they came and what happened that you insert your film on the one side and it is going on passing from these ring of first the developer then the fixer then it is the wash right here and after getting wash from this area you are going to have the dryness of by this filament and uh, you are going to get the film exit here this time is also part of, this is that uh, actually the automatic developer was there but now it is gone and uh, there was duplicating machine as well but now the the digital way there's no need of the du duplicating work the digital radiography actually has the access machine same like before but this has a less ms there is sensor there is a computer there is monitor and the printer which is right there what is the advantage of uh, this x ray machine which is digital in nature this a uh, low kvp and ma that is only up to 5 ma very accurate timer small focusing spot you can take the x ray it is portable for, uh, to uh, this is need that dc current it is not the ac current that you are going to have to uh, take the everything with you so under exposure you can um, generate it more it is like this these are the different sensors these are available by different type of materials and these are the different device, devices devices of the sensor which are available in the market you can purchase any of the conductor and these are the very promising one these are the uh, latest we have opg as well as we have the uh, dg uh, films as well no advantages are it the reduce the exposure of the patient ability to enhance the image improve the patient education you can easily educate if you can produce the instant image and it is the better work flow that you can no no develop no anything you are going to have the uh, very uh, environmentally friendly patient is not disturbed more no dark room errors are there and uh, you can get the good image and you can transfer it from one to you can go for the net you can use for the picture you can deliver it by email and the last is the patient um, guideline uh, professional judgment and select what is the equipment reliability okay. leakage of the radiation should not be there tiber equation is always there. x ray production should be according to the requirement and inspection rule should be there you see we have three type of cone one is longer one which has 16 impulses 12 run 9 impulses 
and short one is four impulses. As the requirement is there, you see if this is the 16, this is eight. If we are going to get the eight, we are going to get the longer and wide image. If we are going to have the long, longer tar target, we are going to get the exact image. It is like this. You are going to get the lar larger image if the target, if the cone is nearer to you. But if the <coughs> cone is far distance away, you take the X-ray, it will be of the accurate size. So that is why the long cone is favored more as compared to sharp cone. There is another thing that if you have the long cone, but the teeth are near away from the film, you are going to get the larger image. And if you have the tooth nearer to the film, you are going to get the exact accurate magnification. These are the two factors. One factor is the how much the distance of the target is there. And second is the how much of the tooth distance is there. If the tooth is right here, which away from the film, you are going to get the larger image. If the film distance is less, you are going to get most accurate image. And that is the, as you are going wider, you are going to get the umbrella more and more. <coughs> and as you are here, you are going to get the sharpness more. Ladies and gentlemen, today's session was regarding the basics of uh, uh, all the parameters and we have covered approximately every aspect of the basis of oral radiology. Right starting from its uh, electromagnetic generation, then coming to the X-rays formation, then the X-rays tube, well then uh, properties of all the X-rays, then the images, different images qualities, and this whole lecture, which we have covered in approximately 120 slides, I think it has covered the maximum basis of our uh, uh, sir, sir, can, you kindly, can, can you kindly repeat uh, the relationship of wavelength and frequency? Sir, as you have already discussed, uh, number of waves and frequency relationship. Uh, lady, uh, our recording is right there in the YouTube. Q for us, this recording is available on the YouTube. Yes, sir. It will be Can you kindly just explain the slide? I think what the concept of wavelength and frequency. Kindly please uh, that slide. Okay, just, I uh, just, just, uh, ladies, just. Uh, no matter, I just. That is the wavelength. This is the distance a wave has to travel. Are you listening? Are you listening? Ah, okay. This is the distance we want to travel. This, this wavelength is going up and down, up and down three times. So, the frequency is three. Good. Now this wavelength is going up and down and up and down two times. The frequency is two. But the difference is when the wave traveling in a particular distance in a less time the frequency increases. The wavelength is less. It has to travel more up and down. As up and down increases, the frequency increases. On the other side, when the wavelength is increased, 
the discus is traveled soon the frequency is less so as the wavelength decreases the frequency increases and as the wavelength increases the frequency reduces that's uh, the concept of wavelength and frequency thank you thank you sir any question thank you so much my pleasure any question uh, thanks sir uh, you can raise sir, your hand uh, and put uh, yes you uh, yes, can you ask, can ask sir you can ask verbal question as well एनिमल if you can see dentine if you can see bone both three parameters if you can distinguish the three parameter the x ray is excellent some people may add another thing which uh, sometime uh, uh, i don't think that it is a, 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 a should be added or not they add the periodontal ligament <laughs> if anyone has uh, any other question yes you can ask sir if anyone has uh any other question you can ask uh, uh also this video will be available uh, on my youtube channel the name of the youtube channel is code and experience and this week uh, it will be uh, also the video will be getting a small uh, uh, many much about for a really lecture see you sir it was yeah. a very good lecture thank you lots of see you inshallah on inshallah see you sir i will request you that uh, please take the uh, 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 good good update again and again. thank you very much everybody and i am very really, really pleased that uh, uh, maximum of you inshallah uh, good to all the uh, lecture thank you very much see you on next saturday ladies and gentlemen thank you very much welcome sir